I'm Colin Foley. We just lost to Stanford, and I need to get the hell out of the U District. So I'm not going to wait for a bus, but I am going to use something fairly new to the system. It's called Lyft. With the weather turning, the students less likely to want to wait for a bus or hope to find a cab. Lyft is tapped into a business idea that opens up an entirely new way of conveniently, affordably, and safely getting around the city. How's it going? Just calling to confirm our uh, Lyft service. Eddie was our first driver. He showed us how the app worked, offered us candy, and took us down to Capitol Hill. Lyft is like a taxi surface, but it's cooler because it's like your friend driving you around. I've given like a guy named Alex, for instance, I've given him probably about five or six rides in about the four and a half months that I've done it. And, you know, I know him by first name. We talk about the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I've never had a drink with him, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. You can rate the driver and the driver can also rate the customer. It'll be like, whoa, how can Eddie improve? Is it safety, is it friendliness, is it cleansiness, or is it, you know, navigation? Due to their immediate availability, Lyft also provides a sense of security in the sense that we didn't have to hang around this level too long. I think, I think the thing that you get with like a cab is sometimes you can call them and they might show up, they might be there, they may not, you just don't know. You know, it's probably more safe than the cab driver. And this security came at an incredibly good price. I mean, this will probably, I wonder what this will cost. I'd say like from the U District up to Capitol Hill, you're looking under 20 bucks for sure. He was right. Lyft is donation based. If one really wanted to be cheap about it, they could do so. But paying less is ultimately unfair to the driver. And the rating system will paint you as an undesirable customer, just as much as bad behavior. If I rate someone who was drunk in, in my Lyft, three stars, I never get paired with them again. So, I think it's sweet. Lyft is spearheading an upheaval in urban transportation. Accountability and responsibility is placed on all sides, leading perhaps to an almost forced bond. But it does still feel real. So, um, what do you enjoy most about being a Lyft driver? Um, fun people. I met several really, you know, today I've had like really great conversations today. I don't know, that's kind of hard to say. Like, I mean, sometimes I can be, I mean, I don't know if I'd say I'd become friends. Maybe like, I mean, it's a big city, so I mean, I'd say I'd become pretty deep acquaintances. Whether or not Lyft's ideals actually create a sense of goodwill on all sides, or if everyone is putting on a show, we come out of it freed from the monotony of a bus, the expense of a cab, or the late night wait for a ride. What road would you take now that you're a Lyft driver? Well, right, what I, I'd take a lift. I take lift. would just take a lift. I would just take a lift. I always take lifts. Lift yourself. I use it all the time, especially after a couple of drinks. I do. If I have to go to downtown and then come back at night, I'll definitely use lift. It would seem lift has changed urban transport forever. I think it revolutionizes it because I'm actually a community member in the city. I speak English and I, you know, I, I, I'm a part of the community and I know most of the people that I've picked up or I've either seen in my own community. I live up on Capitol Hill. So the building that I've managed, I've actually given rides of my tenants. At the same time, I'm their landlord and their, their cabbie, kind of. It's sort of funny. I mean, it's kind of a huge communal thing that you don't normally see in a city, I think. This communal business trusts its customers and employees, and with their own simple and effective checks and balances, will only flourish. <laughs>